Welcome to Where Are They Now? We reach into the archives of Lenape, Shawnee, Cherokee, and Seneca High Schools and invite selected alumni to share memories and fill us in on their career paths after commencement. Since Lenape's first graduating class in 1961, Shawnees in 1972, Cherokees in 1978, and Senecas in 2005, over 68,000 individuals have received diplomas from these four schools. Hello and welcome to Where Are They Now? I'm Mark Sonsini, a 1996 graduate of Cherokee High School. And today we'll be talking with a Shawnee graduate from the class of 2004. He is a dentist living in Collingswood, New Jersey. I'd like to welcome Richard Weber to the show. Richard, hey, thanks, Lord. thanks, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Excited. it's great to have you. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear about your career since high school, but let's talk a little bit about how you got to Shawnee. Uh, did you grow up in South Jersey? I'm a South Jersey guy, yeah. I grew up in Tabernacle, okay. uh, way, way out there. Um, and yeah, I was actually the last full graduating class from Tabernacle to go to Shawnee. Okay. Yep. Seneca was opening at the time, so I guess after that, um, first year or two, I think kids had a choice mm -hmm. whether they wanted to go to Shawnee, or at least from Tabernacle, right. they had a choice to go to either Shawnee or Seneca. Yeah, um, I think it's how it played out. Like I think 05 had the choice, 06 okay. I think some of the uh, athletes were able to stay. Okay. And then by uh, by my younger sister's year, one of my younger sister's years, 07, they all went to Seneca going forward. Okay, yeah. so you have a, a few siblings that went to school in the district. Tell us, you had one at Shawnee yeah, with you old, and then the other ones were at Seneca? Yeah, my older brother Jason, he went to uh, Shawnee 01. And then I had a younger one younger sister that was 2007 at Seneca, and then a twin brother and sister, Eric and Xavier, who went to uh, Seneca 2011, and then okay. my baby sister graduated uh, 2015. Okay. Yep. And then your mom also teaches at Seneca. Yeah, my mom's a teacher. She's a French and uh, Spanish teacher over at Seneca as well. Janice Weber, right? Janice Weber, yep. Okay. Yeah. So quite a family connection to the uh, Lenape District here. Yeah, we got some, got some deep roots. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so let's talk about your years at Shawnee. Um, some of the teachers that had an impact on you. I know Rich Watson was one of them. Rich Watson, he was uh, really impactful. He was a great, great teacher. Really made uh, you know physics engaging, exciting, interesting, and uh, just a funny, cool guy. You know, so so that was always uh, motivational to see someone make uh, learning fun. You know, like, yeah. uh, show the exciting part of, of learning. And then on the other side of things, I had a history teacher, uh, Mr. Bacon. He was really great. You know, it's very engaging, intellectual, and. Um, just having fun with it, you know, that was, that was big for me. Good. Uh, and some activities you were involved in at Shawnee, you did band for a little bit, um, also um, football. Played, uh, played the drums and, uh, you know, still have the set. Don't bang on it as much with the, you know, the, with the baby, you know, around. <laughs> sure. But, um, yeah, so we did some band and then uh, football. That was kind of a short-lived career because, uh, you know, a 110-pound kid running a football doesn't really work out too good. Right. Broke my leg in one of the games, oh, boy. so uh, that kind of put a hiatus to my my football career okay. and focused more on uh, on wrestling. Okay, and uh, there you, you can be 110 pounds and sure. still have a career, you know. And that can work out. <laughs> that could work out. So you did you wrestle varsity all four years? So I missed my freshman year because with my broken leg, I was kind of like okay. I would come back like halfway through the season, so I just kind of worked out, tried to bulk up a little bit. Okay, and then the next two years, I got a little bit of start time here and there my sophomore year. And then junior, senior year, I was varsity. Okay. Uh, you also were involved in student government? Yeah, I did. Uh, I think I was the freshman, freshman class treasurer. Um, and then kind of through the years, just kind of stayed, you know, stayed with it. Um, so that was, that was fun. That and was exciting. Latin club as well? Latin club. Yep, yep. Latin club with Mr. Campbell. Uh, we, we had a good time. <laughs> I think I was the treasurer for that one, too. So okay. I was kind of always, uh, I guess I had my hands on the money, I guess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about um, some of your special memories that you remember. From Shawnee, I know one of them had involved the uh, being treasurer for the, um, was it student government at that time? Yeah, that you were running for. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was exciting because we recorded a speech, so and then they played it for the entire school. So you know, I was kind of relatively obscure. You know, I was from Tabernacle. Okay. There was maybe like 100, 125 kids from Tabernacle, and then the rest are mostly from you know from Medford. Medford and sure. I don't really you know know that many people there. Right. So it's like fairly early in the year. You do a speech. You get some people laughing, all of a sudden, you know, people kind of like know who you are. So that was, right. was kind of fun. Lots of new cool. friends. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and then through wrestling, you were a lot of tournaments and uh, districts you competed in as well? Yeah, yeah. There was a tournament in the beginning of uh, my senior year that I, that I won that I 
I probably shouldn't have won, so they ended up, I got some like award for that, and that was, that was kind of cool. And then uh, my senior year, I won districts, which was uh, really exciting, so um, yeah, those, are, those are some pretty special memories. Wow, terrific. And uh, I and guess the, uh, the less formal side of things, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes I would just go with my buddy after school, we'd toss the Frisbee around for you know, a couple hours. I right. can't really remember the last time I uh, had that kind of time to, yeah. <laughs> to relax a little bit like that. But Yeah, that's what it seems like when you get to uh, the real world, you have less <laughs> yeah. time to do this. Yeah, your, your Frisbee time goes down a little bit. <laughs> right, <you know? laughs> exactly. What was I doing with all my free time back then? <laughs> um, all right, so you graduate Shawnee, you move on to college, and you go to Rutgers University. Mm -hmm. And what were you majoring in there? So I actually, I actually majored in, in marketing. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I always knew I wanted to, to do dentistry, so I kind of did marketing and biology, um, just because you know they don't really tell you anything in dental school about you know running a business or anything like that. So I figured I'd get a little bit of that in undergrad, and uh, even though anyone I told my my majors to would look at me like I had two heads, uh, <laughs> you know it was, it was good. It was a good experience. So when did you know you wanted to go to school for dentistry? Well, the only reason that anyone could believe this is because it's actually, my mom actually has it written down, like in a baby book somewhere. There's proof. Where, yeah, there's proof. So when I was three years old, I, uh, I went to the dentist and I said, hey, mom, you know, I want to be a dentist. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it was kind of always, you know, like a theme, like a recurring theme. Like I was always interested in it, kind of shadowing. Um, actually, some local, I know like a local orthodontist, Dr. Sujan, actually had me uh, come to his practice and shadow with uh, okay. his daughter. Um, which is which is really cool. So then, when I got to college, you know, you start making some real decisions, career mm -hmm. decisions. Sure. I, uh, I I did some more shadowing, kind of followed that path, and just you know, it, was, it really clicked. So. Okay. Yeah. So after Rutgers, you go to University of Medicine uh, and Dentistry of New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is now now Rutgers School of Dental Medicine. Okay. So I got to like scratch off my diplomas, <laughs> right? Like you know, Rutgers <laughs> on there too. So. And through your time there and at Rutgers, uh, you were on Dean's List, you had several awards and scholarships. Tell us about a couple of those. Yeah, so, you know, the, with the Dean's List, it's, you, you got to keep, you know, your GPA like, fairly like, high just because to, to, it gets so competitive now. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was some, some scholarships uh, through, through dental school with, uh, there's a Richard Mehevich uh, Memorial Scholarship, which just kind of recognized some people that... Uh, had had some traits similar to this particular professor who was um, he actually uh, tragically passed away during my uh, junior year okay and um, so you know that was that was sad but they that was nice that they you know gave me that that must have meant a lot to you yeah it, it did he was a, he was a really amazing man um, yeah so that was that was special and then uh, there's like an Abdul uh, Islami scholarship which um, you know, just kind of recognize like academic achievement and stuff like that. So okay. it, was, it was fun. It was cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you also participated in an externship in Ireland. Yeah, that was, a lot, of, that was a lot of fun. So they, they selected uh, just two people to represent uh, UMDNJ slash Rutgers uh, to go over to Dublin and go to uh, Trinity College, which it was very, uh, very Harry Potter scene, you know. So oh, yeah. It was really cool, like this very, very... Um, some like gothic themes like this throughout okay. the uh, campus and stuff and I got to spend time over there and uh, kind of see how they do it which it is a little bit different and it was really kind of eye-opening um, very very focused um, on like on the research the actual uh, dentistry part of it though basically the same as yeah dentistry basically here. the same they actually do it in a few a few less years they go they, they don't really have the undergrad they go right into which is what most of Europe does they go right into um, dental school but it's it's a longer period of time, okay. so they kind of combined uh, undergrad and dental okay. in one. Yeah. And then when you finish up dental school, you're selected for a very uh, rigorous um, residency. Yeah, Tell yeah, that, that was that was an amazing experience. Um, it was at Overlook Hospital in, in Summit, New Jersey, so up in North Jersey there. Um, and yeah, there was just two residents, and we were the dental people for the hospital. So you know, we got a ton of experience with. You know, seeing emergencies and surgery and, you know, cosmetic things and really the whole spectrum of, uh, of dentistry. And they would bring in a lot of attendings from the local community up there. Okay. A lot of, you know, attending faculty, which were dentists, specialists, things like that. So we just have all this one-on-one -on -one time with them. And you know, they'd just be sharing a lifetime of experience with us every time they came in, which was uh, really, really kind of set my, my uh, career on a path where I was you know, interested and engaged and doing a lot of 
aspects of dentistry, okay. um, which makes it exciting and it makes yeah. it fun. And we'll talk about that. You're trying to incorporate a lot of that into your current practice now, which we'll get to in just a minute. So out of dental school and you go to a private practice, uh, you spend a lot of time through college up in North Jersey and you get to come back down here uh, in Mays Landing was your first yeah, job my out first, of college. Yeah, uh, my first job was down in Mays Landing. It was, uh, it was a breath of fresh air to kind of come back to South Jersey. You know, Jersey, yeah. it's kind of, we know down here, it's kind of two different states, you sure. know. So up there it's much more uh, New York influenced and down here, you know, it's, it's more Phillies. Um, so, yeah, I came down, we moved to Collingswood um, and then I was working in Mays Landing. It's a little bit of a drive, but uh, it was a great practice down there. Got a lot of experience, a lot of you know, private practice. You know, now we're out of the hospital setting. We're in, right. in the real world. So that was, uh, that was really, really wild. That was cool. And it also worked out for you. We were talking before the show. Uh, you have aspirations of opening your own practice in this area of South Jersey, a little more inland in Burlington County. And I never realized this, that there's a, a non-compete issue. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, I didn't know about it you know, until dental school and, and looking for jobs either. But um, you know, you form a relationship with the patient when you're working when you're working as an associate for someone else. Sure. So there's a little bit of, of risk of a patient leaving a practice to to go with the associate. Okay. So what they do is they there's like a non compete clause which is based on you know some geography. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it was around like a. I don't know, 10 miles, something like that, okay. where I couldn't practice. So I wanted to make sure that it was in a location where it wasn't going to affect my, you know, ultimate dreams of opening up, you know, where I grew up. Sure. So uh, that's that's why Maze Landing also made a little bit more sense too at the time. Okay. So yeah. And then, so how many years were you there? I was there for a, about a year, well, two years. Okay. Um, and I transitioned to actually a little bit more local within the district practice, um, Minokian Family Cosmetic Dentistry okay. over in Marlton. Um, the dentists there are, are two brothers that own the practice and they're, they're really phenomenal dentists. So um, they were you know, acting in, in a mentorship role and I was able to do some procedures that were um, a little bit more specialized and they were okay. able to mentor me with some more of the uh, you know, cosmetic and okay. uh, global uh, treatment kind of thing. So okay. yeah, that was that was an amazing experience. And that was actually finishing up over the last like three years. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. So by this point you've had experience in almost every aspect of dentistry at this point. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. So I uh, that's what I really, you know, really wanted to do. I wanted to get like a really solid clinical foundation mm -hmm. so that you can focus on so you have the confidence to do everything the the, the dentistry side, you know, the technical right. side. And then you could also enjoy the you know, patient interaction and, you know, kind of the, the part that makes it, you know, even more fun, the, the helping people, sure. laughing, you know, having a good time, right. that, that side of things. Developing rapport, getting to know people. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so from there, you decide to open your own practice. Love Your Smile Dental Center. Love Your Smile Dental Center, yeah. And you're in Tabernacle now. Yeah. Tell us in, about that. So, yeah, we're in uh, Tabernacle on uh, Route 206, um, right by the Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. And it's, it was... Really, you know, when I was going through high school, and I, I always said, you know, Tabernacle is going to be such a perfect place to open up a dental practice. You know, I'm from I'm from the area. There's not that many, you know, dentists currently in the area. Right. And, um, you know, and I, I love I love where I grew up. I love the people there. So I was able to to do it. You know, there's some definitely some some zoning things you have to navigate. You know, because it okay. is it's in the Pine Land, so it is sure. you know, protected areas. Right. Um, but after having you know gone through that, um, we opened up the practice in September of 2017. Okay. And uh, we've been going strong ever since, and, and things are really you know picking up, and, and we're having a, a great time doing it. Is it just you, or you have some other doctors with you as well? So it's it's just me. You okay. Know, we we opened from scratch, you know, and so uh, we weren't like taking any kind of practice over or anything like that. Sure. It was um, brand new, so. You know, it takes a little bit of time to like build up the flow of patients. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, it's just it's just the uh, me and um, a few of my you know my teammates that we work with. Uh, we have you know Jeanette, who's up in the up in the front, kind of works the front of the house. Okay. My wife Emily, she she helps out. You know, okay. Um, and then we have uh, Pam, who helps me with uh, dental assisting, and and Charlie, who helps me with uh, some of the marketing, social media kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're ha oh, and there's also Marilyn, who's a uh, our French Bulldog. 
and she's kind of our, our stress reduction coordinator. Okay. So she, uh, <laughs> she, she'll pop in every now and again, help calm people down, you know. Awesome. You've got a mascot that helps people <laughs> feel better. <laughs> exactly. Well, that, that all goes, is all part of kind of your philosophy, this, this kind of new, more modern take on um, making it a nice place for people to visit when they go to the dentist. Tell us about, about your, your yeah. thought process behind that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's always kind of that, uh, the stigma with like, you know, the dentist, you know, no one, no one loves going to the dentist. Right. So, and a lot of it, there's a lot of, um, you know, associations that get made. There's like the smell, there's this, there's that. So right. we really kind of looked at, at the whole experience and we're saying, how could we make this as comfortable, as pleasant as possible, you know, and, and really focus on the experience that, that you have when you're interacting with the, with the, you know, with me, with the people, the team. Um, so we got a little coffee bar. I bring in some Krispy Kreme donuts on uh, on Saturdays. <laughs> we don't want to, you know, get any conspiracy theories started about that, <laughs> but you know, just to, you know, make it a little bit more uh, more pleasant. Right. And um, yeah, we got you know a nice big TV in the front. When you lean back, there's a TV up above. Oh, very so cool. So it just kind of makes it you know more more comfortable. Yeah. You know, so it, it, the amenity. You know, we have a little like amenities like thing on our on, online where it kind of okay. goes through like all the all the little things you could put on whatever kind of custom music you want to listen to and very cool we got the Netflix in the in the room so wow. you can catch your show and stuff like that that's a very fresh and, and different take on on dentistry so yeah it you know just makes things a little bit a little bit more comfortable you know easier, yeah and, and that's that's what it's all about a lot of people get apprehensive about going to dentists so this helps to alleviate a lot of that I'm sure yeah and you know what the truth is it's kind of it's kind of this vicious cycle that happens because when you get apprehensive you tend to delay, right? And when you delay, you tend to actually have things that happen, right? And then things can be a little bit, you know, it gets worse, tougher. So, by making it really encouraging to come in for your, you know, your regular six-month appointments, keep everything nice and easy, it just makes it better for everyone. Um, and I actually, kind of to that effect, what we did too is because Tabernacle, it's a lot of uh, well, there's Leisure Town there, which is you know sure. mostly retirees, mm -hmm. a lot of small business owners in the area, so most people don't have. Not, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of people don't have dental insurance. Right. So we also, um, you know, we made like an in-house plan for people that covers, you know, their cleanings and the exams and x-rays and, and stuff like that that you need. And it also helps out with, uh, we do like a discount on the, on the treatment as well, a 20% discount. So it's a way that, you know, for people that don't have dental insurance, it just makes it a little bit easier to kind of get in the door, have routine care, just, you know, make it more about like regular sure. visits, that kind of thing. Terrific. Yeah. So let's talk about your family life. You mentioned your wife, Emily, who works with you. Yeah. Uh, interesting story about how you met her. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, my wife, Emily, she's, she's been amazing. We've been together for 11 years now, uh, married for seven. And she's from uh, east of France, so pretty close to, uh, to the Germany area. Okay. And she was actually doing an internship with a, a former Lenape French teacher. Okay. Her husband was uh, had an IT company, so like a young French lady in the Lenape district. You know, Seneca Lenape. You know, French teachers get talking. Sure. So, you know, my mom is the French teacher. So Emily actually went to um, went to my mom's class and kind of just you know did a, did a lesson with her. Okay. And uh, you know, I'm one of six kids, so she pulled out her her little Rolodex of, of children that she has, <laughs> and she says, "Hey, this one's your age." So uh, yeah, Great. so I got mom Emily's, was matchmaking. Yeah, so I got Emily's number, gave her a call, took her out to uh, a lovely Bertucci's dinner, and uh, <laughs> you know, I guess the rest was history. You wowed her with Bertucci's. <laughs> wowed nice her with uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> some, some nice thin crust, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys just had you all. Oh, you have baby daughter Jude. Yeah, yeah, Jude, uh, Jude Aline. She's the uh, love of my life, the cutest little thing. Um, we actually got a big picture of her blown up on the practice, so the first thing you see when you walk in is her with this big smile. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's great. Any teeth in the picture, or just she's got a nice little gaff there. We probably got some braces <laughs> in her future, you okay. know. But yeah, she's got a nice big smile there. Um, yeah, so so Jude is a year and a half, and uh, life changing moment having your first child. Serious life changing moment. Yeah, yeah. I never really understood the. Uh, I never really fully appreciated what time management means. Sure. You know, until, you have, <laughs> until you have a little one. Um, yeah, so then Jude, and then we got a, got another little one on the way. Congratulations. Thank you. Terrific, yeah, terrific. Yeah. So a couple months you'll be couple father months, of two then. Father of two, yeah. Excellent. And, and the, the bald spot will expand. You know, yeah, and that's typically how it works, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so in your free time, um, some of it you 
give not only as your free time, but you're volunteering as well at the Cathedral Kitchen. Yeah, Tell us about that. Yeah, Cathedral Kitchen in Camden, it's, a, it's a, an amazing program. Um, they actually have an entire dental clinic uh, set up so that you know, we're able to treat people um, at no charge to them. They just come in and, and have dentistry taken care of. And different people over the years have donated you know, the materials and then the chairs. So they have that set up. Um, as well as a whole like kind of like food kitchen side of things where they serve thousands of meals a day mm -hmm. in, a, in a very um, in a very like uh, I don't want to say like upscale but it's like a very nice very nice environment kind of like a cafe environment okay where so people go there and they, they feel good you know being sure. there and they also have some wonderful programs where they're you know teaching people different skills you know cooking things things of that nature um, so it's really it's an amazing it's an amazing program I'm really happy to uh, be a part of it. That's terrific that you're involved with that. Um, and then in your actual free time, uh, you like jogging, playing ping pong. What else are you up to? Yeah, yeah. Those. Well, free time is uh, yeah lim limited. limited to say the <laughs> least right now. But um, in the free time that I get, you know, Emily and I we love going on walks with with Jude and Marilyn. Uh, you know, we have our house in Collingswood is uh, it's got some years on it under its belt. You know, it's a sure. good hundred year old house. So okay. there's always projects. There's always work to do there. Yeah, exactly. So. You know that's been uh, been most of our most of our time, and then try to hang out with my siblings as much as we can, and uh, yeah, pretty much speaks for most of it. You know, terrific. So about almost 15 years now since you graduated, Shawnee. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking forward to in the next 15 years? Well, you know, these last 15 years, I feel like a lot of it has built up to the to the time when I could open up this dental practice. You know, that's really been my dream since a, a really like weirdly young age. Since you were three. Since I was three, yeah. So <laughs> um, it's kind of like built and built and built and built up to here. And now that I'm here, it, I'm finally able to kind of look at the horizon. And uh, yeah, I think the horizon looks like just continuing to, to develop the practice, you know, in in Tabernacle and, and just, you know, take care of as, as many people as we can over there. Um, I'm always doing tons of continuing education and, and kind of like traveling for, for those types of things. Okay. So uh, you know, just just doing that and spending as much time as I can with the family and and kind of looking, yeah, looking off into the, into the horizon. Great. Yeah. Well, congratulations on all your success since Thank Shawnee, you. and we wish you continued success in the future. Thanks hey. a lot for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's been great, great having here. you. Thank you. Awesome. And that'll do it for this episode of Where Are They Now? For other Lenape District alumni interviews, check us out online at youtube.com/lenapedistricttv. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.